On March 10, 2019, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 took off from Addis Ababa Boli International Airport. It was supposed to be routine. Flight 302 was headed to Nairobi, Kenya. Just a short hop across the border. Nothing unusual. A bright Sunday morning, clear skies, a full flight, and one of the most advanced passenger jets in the world. The crew was well-trained and ready. As the engines roared to life and the Boeing 737 MAX began its takeoff roll, no one on board suspected anything unusual. The passengers settled into their seats, expecting nothing more than a smooth journey across East Africa. But just minutes after takeoff, something unexpected happened. The pilots radioed a distress call. The aircraft wasn't climbing as expected. Something was wrong, terribly wrong. The flight crew fought to keep the aircraft under control, but whatever they were dealing with was getting worse, fast. The plane was speeding up, dipping and climbing erratically. In the cabin, confusion turned into fear. What was happening to this brand new jet? Why couldn't the pilots stop it? What went wrong? Stick with us as we dive into this tragic story. This is the story of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. It was a quiet Sunday morning in Addis Ababa, March 10th, 2019. At Bowl International Airport, the usual routine was underway. Early flights, coffee in hand, sleepy passengers checking screens for their gates. Among them were 157 people, 149 passengers, and eight crew members getting ready to board Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. Most were heading to Nairobi for work, meetings, family, or just another day of travel. A short haul flight to Nairobi, Kenya, just under two hours in the air. The boarding gate was busy, but calm. Flight attendants greeted passengers, and final checks were being done. Nothing seemed out of place. The aircraft? A Boeing 737 MAX 8. Brand new. Delivered just four months earlier. At the time, it was one of the most modern and fuel-efficient jets in the skies. In the cockpit sat Captain Yared Gatachu, just 29 years old, but already one of the airline's most respected pilots. Over 8,000 hours of flying time. Next to him was First Officer Ahmed Nur Muhammad, 25 years old, with just over 350 hours in the 737. The flight was scheduled to depart at 8.38 a.m. local time. It had all the markings of a normal, smooth flight. No technical issues had been reported. No bad weather, no warnings. But buried deep inside the aircraft was a hidden flaw. One that even the pilots didn't fully understand. And within six minutes of takeoff, everything would begin to unravel. At 8.38 in the morning, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 lifted off from runway 07R at Bowl International Airport. Everything about the takeoff looked routine. But just 44 seconds after liftoff, something happened. Something no one in the cabin could see. A strike, possibly from a bird, damaged a tiny but critical component on the aircraft's nose. This is the left angle of attack sensor. It didn't cause any noise. No one felt a thing. But from that moment on, the aircraft's computer began receiving false readings. It believed the plane was climbing at too steep an angle even though it wasn't and buried deep within the aircraft's software, an automated system kicked in. MCAS. MCAS stands for Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. It was designed to automatically lower the nose if the aircraft thinks it's about to stall. But on this flight, it was working off bad data. At first, MCAS stayed quiet. The aircraft's flaps were still down, which keeps the system inactive. But that was about to change. Could this sensor failure have been prevented? Can we as passengers demand more checks and balances in aviation safety? Think about it. Every detail, every system, every sensor matters. Approximately one minute into the flight, the first officer, following the captain's instructions, retracted the flaps. Within 10 seconds of this action, the autopilot disengaged and the aircraft started to descend. The captain directed the first officer to report a flight control problem to the control tower. By the second minute, the MCAS had angled the horizontal stabilizer sharply downward, causing the aircraft to dive. Although the pilots were able to temporarily correct the nose-down attitude, the aircraft continued to lose altitude. It became a tug of war, 
the pilots fighting to climb, the aircraft's software forcing it down. The autopilot had already disengaged, and now the crew was flying manually, trying to keep the plane level. But the nose kept dipping. The aircraft started descending rapidly, even though it was only two minutes into the flight. At this point, the captain issued his first distress call to air traffic control. Flight control problem. By now, the MCS had already angled the stabilizer downward so severely that the pilots were losing the battle to stay in the air. But they weren't guessing anymore. The first officer recognized what was happening. He shouted, stab trim cut out. That was the procedure for runaway trim. They had trained for this. The crew flipped the stab trim cutout switches, cutting power to the system. MCAS was now disabled. For a moment, it seemed like they had regained control. But now came a new problem. Without electric trim, the only way to correct the stabilizer angle was by cranking it by hand, a large wheel near their knees. But they couldn't move it. Because the stabilizer had already been forced into a steep nose-down angle, and the aircraft was flying fast, the aerodynamic pressure on the tail was massive. It was like trying to turn a car's steering wheel while driving full speed with the wheels locked. They tried and failed. Time was slipping away. So was altitude. By minute three, the captain radioed the tower again. Request return to base. The request was approved instantly. Other planes were ordered out of the area. The controllers began clearing a path. But the situation was spiraling. As the crew attempted to turn back toward Addis Ababa, the aircraft banked sharply to the right. The right wing tipped down, the nose still refusing to rise. The captain made a final desperate decision. He turned the trim system back on, hoping the electric motors would now let him correct the stabilizer. But there was a problem. Reactivating the electric trim also reactivated MCAS. And nine seconds later, it struck again. The stabilizer was forced even farther down. The nose dropped violently. The pilots pulled hard on their yokes, straining against the dive. But it was too late. The forces were too great. The trim wheel spun on its own. MCS had taken control again. The aircraft was now in a steep accelerating descent. It plunged toward the ground at nearly 700 miles per hour. The last few seconds were a blur. Alarms blared in the cockpit. The ground rushed up. And just six minutes after takeoff, at 0844 local time, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 slammed into a field near Bashoftu, Ethiopia. The impact left a massive crater, measuring 28 meters wide and 40 meters long. Wreckage was driven over 10 meters into the soil. Bits of the aircraft and fragments of life were scattered across the field. Take a moment in the comments to honor the 157 lives lost. Just writing rest in peace can be a small way to remember them. The first responders arrived within minutes, police, firefighting units, and a crew from a nearby Ethiopian Air Force base. The sight of the wreckage was a horror no one was prepared for. Flames still licked the sky, rising from the scattered debris of the aircraft, but their priority was clear. Extinguish the fire and secure the scene. As the fire trucks worked furiously to put out the flames, Ethiopian police quickly cordoned off the crash site, allowing only authorized personnel to approach. In the midst of the chaos, the Ethiopian Red Cross and local villagers joined forces with air crash investigators, all sifting through the wreckage in search of survivors, clues, and tragically human remains. As human remains were recovered, they were carefully bagged and transported to Bol International Airport, where refrigeration units, usually reserved for flowers destined for export, were repurposed to store them temporarily. The remains were then transferred to St. Paul's Hospital in Addis Ababa, where they would be stored until further identification could be made. But this was no simple task. With over 150 victims, identifying the bodies was a monumental effort. To aid in this, Interpol and Blake Emergency Services a private British disaster response firm contracted by the Ethiopian government were brought in. Their task was clear. Gather human tissue for DNA testing to assist in the identification process. The crash victim, positive identification was announced on the 13th of September 2019. Nearly 100 disaster victim identification, DVI experts from 14 countries supported the Interpol Incident Response Team IRT mission. The investigation was extensive and global, involving multiple agencies, experts, and forensic teams from around the world. 
The Ethiopian Civil Aviation Authority, ECAA, the agency responsible for investigating civil aviation accidents in Ethiopia, quickly took charge of the investigation. However, this disaster was too complex to be tackled by one agency alone. The involvement of Boeing, the aircraft manufacturer, was crucial. Boeing expressed its readiness to assist the investigation, offering cooperation with the United States National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB. The United States Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, also provided support, sending experts to assist in the unfolding investigation. The first significant breakthrough came on March 11th, when both the cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder were recovered from the crash site. This was an immense relief, as these black boxes could provide key data to explain what went wrong during those horrifying minutes of Flight 302's final moments. As the investigation progressed, investigators uncovered startling parallels. The angle of attack, AOA sensor on Flight 302, which was damaged possibly due to a bird strike shortly after takeoff, sent faulty readings. The faulty MCAS system had also been identified as a major factor in the Lion Air Flight 610 crash, which had involved a similar failure of the AOA sensor and the activation of MCAS. By March 13th, new evidence from satellite data and the crash site pointed to another disturbing fact. The aircraft's jack screw, which controls the pitch of the horizontal stabilizer, was found in the full nose-down position. This meant that, like the Lion Air crash, Flight 302 was also configured to dive uncontrollably as the MCAS system continued to push the nose downward, even after attempts to disable it. On December 23, 2022, after years of thorough investigation, the ECAA released its final report. The findings were stark. The most probable cause of the crash was repetitive and uncommanded nose-down inputs from the MCAS system, which was triggered by erroneous readings from the damaged AOA sensor. This led to the airplane descending at an alarming rate of 33,000 feet per minute close to the ground, making the accident unrecoverable. The crash of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 was a heartbreaking tragedy. It was a devastating moment for their families, the aviation industry, and the world. If you made it this far, you're someone who cares. Consider subscribing for more real stories that deserve to be told. Hit that like button to help more people see this video and share it with someone who still believes flying is always safe. Together, we can make sure that tragedies like this never fade and are never repeated.